I've been making exhibitions in um, in galleries like White Cube that is essentially commercial, what we call commercial galleries for decades. And for a long time, I simply assumed that exhibition, those exhibitions were, um, the purpose of them was to present what I'd done recently. That is my new body of work or some new body of work. And uh, of course it is that, but I found after thinking about them for a long time or maybe failing to think about them for a long time, that some of those shows didn't satisfy me very much as shows. They were, I hope, full of good work, but I don't think they were interesting as exhibitions. And I think one of the reasons for that is that, uh, although I don't like to repeat myself in my work, and I like to be my work to be very singular, that is, each picture be very unique on its own and not part of a se sequence or series or anything, that nevertheless there are things that do recur over time without me wanting them to and maybe not consciously but they recur and if you look at those recurrences they build shaped groups of pictures that kind of say something about an attitude or a theme or a genre or whatever it might be in fact maybe all those together they're doing that lately and i'm doing it again here where i put together several older pictures that have connections with one or two or three of the newer ones and I think that that probably helps or nudges people or suggests to people ways of looking at the newer ones that is a little richer than just seeing them as the latest thing that came out of my studio. I think everybody who works in pictorial form is somehow subject to the repetition, the generic repetition of certain kinds of themes that attract them. It could be anything, any any one of an infinite number of themes, but they recur in different ways in different pictures under different circumstances, and those recurrences create a certain kind of dialogue. Sometimes I think, I use a kind of literary analogy, which I think is fitting to picture making. You know, each picture is kind of like a chapter, and if you see the show together, it kind of becomes a novel or a short story or a few chapters in a narrative. And I think that aspect of it is enriching. So I hope that I will be able to keep making these kind of shows in galleries and finding different combinations. I think they're, I hope that people will enjoy them more than they would just seeing what I've done the last year or two. The feeling I wanted was how we deal with disappointment. The process of making that picture was fascinating because it really did exist in a certain limbo between me simply covering covering an existing event as a photographer and the opposite of having a, a much more active hand in shaping it. I did have an active hand in shaping it, but part of my active shaping was to resist that potential. And that limbo space, I think, is a, an area I like to work in. Sometimes I call it near documentary because the picture is almost a documentary of a real occurrence and of course almost not. The vagueness of that in between is I think is a fascinating creative space to be in and I feel that Van Crowd is one of the most satisfying outcomes of that. Sunseeker is one of those pictures that came from something I actually saw. I see something that intrigues me as a potential subject, but aspects of the circumstances that I've seen it, in which I've seen it, seem lacking. I probably felt that the real place explained her a little more than I would want to. And so I tried to drain explanation from the picture by simplifying it as much as possible and turning it into a, another kind of picture where her eccentric behavior could be sort of brought more to the foreground and any obvious social circumstance would be subdued uh, to pay attention to the pure gesture. For all the uh, plastic work I do, I feel my pictures are still accurate depictions of behavior, accurate depictions of behavior I've witnessed. Many decades ago, I had witnessed an, uh, an encounter with, between my parents in our house on a summer day what really stayed in my memory, I realized, was the backlighting of the room, the shadowiness of the room, and the large window. And it again occurred to me, without 
me knowing and being able to remember why that it would have to do with the sparkling of the light as it passed through some obstacle and of course that became cut glass necklace that was in a way the literary creation of the subject if you want to think about it that way i created the subject in a way to bring that sparkle into the world of the picture it's not just a picture that's not color it's a picture in which the color has vanished in the process of it being made I think if you see it that way, it, it in itself creates a kind of dynamism.